I'm pretty excited to be here because, well, I know Michael for more than 11 years. Okay, I'll keep the history for later. I actually put it in the slide. Um, so this is my first time being at this meetup, so I just want to understand the audience makeup a bit. How many of you are in a coding job right now? Okay, this is... All right, um, how many of you made a mid-career switch? Okay, so how many of you are learning coding um, to do your own startup eventually? Oh, nobody? Oh, okay, a few, okay. How many of you have tried living the nomad, remote work and travel lifestyle? Oh, wow. How many of you want to remote work and travel? Okay, good. At least that's good, because I am living that life right now. Um, so today, I'm going to focus on talking about how to be an in-demand coder, so that hopefully you're so in-demand, you don't have to go to an office 9 to 5 anymore. You can work from wherever you want and still get a really good salary. All right? Um, so to give you some background about who we are, so how many of you have heard of Upwork? Elance, those freelancer platforms? Yeah, so think of us as, uh, so we are like a freelancer platform, except that uh, we have very high quality control, meaning that all the developers and designers who want to join our platform has to pass through our online code test, a video interview followed by the live code test, and then a project test and maybe a task test. Uh, our company is fully remote. There is totally no office, and none of our guys work in office. Um, I, don't, I have not even met most of my team members or the freelancers on our platform because we're all just traveling. Time. Uh, yeah, so we are a platform of vetted designers and developers worldwide. Uh, right now, we have 450 plus talents, uh, freelancers on our platform, and over 1,000 plus companies who actively hire on our platform and look for coders. Um, they range from really high quality companies from Y Combinator startups all the way to Series C startups, even multinational corporations like Deloitte, GovTech, Singtel, NCS. You know, those are our clients. Um, so, yeah. Our client pool is worldwide, right? So like all the cities over here, like we have clients and more like all over the world. Our talent pool is also worldwide, right? So, but the reason why I'm sharing this with you is um, beyond freelancing, what we noticed is a lot of our talents got bought out, as in these companies after working with them as a freelancer actually uh, bought them off our platform, offered them full-time contracts complete with equity. So you're not looking at really low level kind of small jobs, but really high quality jobs and opportunities right here. Uh, they got cross-country transfers, so I'll share the countries that they got transferred. Um, like some of our Nigerian talents actually, you know, got a job, full-time job with really good offer from companies in Switzerland, Silicon Valley, some Malaysians got relocated to USA, some Singaporeans started as just freelancers and, well, ended up getting really lucrative offers from over here. Yeah, like, that's just some of the examples. But the reason why I'm sharing all this is because we have we ended up having a lot of data of what clients are looking for, right? With all this data, we already know, okay, what it takes to be an in-demand coder. So this is what I'm going to share with you. Um, but first, why did I end up talking here? Um, does anyone recognize this guy on this bottom left? I think he looks a bit thinner, uh, but he's still bald. Um, as you can see, he was still doing videos back then. This was 11 years ago, by the way. As, as you can see, I look terrible in the past, but... Yeah, um, and I, I think this was a few years ago, right? So you can see the evolution of some people. Um, and um, you see, you see, we, we kind of evolved. I, I hope we look better right now compared to 11 years ago. So please say yes. Yeah. For Michael's sake, not my sake, for his sake. <laughs> okay, thank you. So uh, what I'm here, I'm going to share very openly on how you could possibly become an in-demand coder. Um, I hope this helps you or boosts your confidence. I can tell you for sure no client cares about your degree, your master's, PhD, no. All right, when it comes to coding, we know for a fact they just look at your skills. Your skills, whether you have experience or not, is also another thing. All right, so, um, so after analyzing all the data on our platform and seeing how clients hire, interview and all, the key traits are, number one, you must have programming aptitude. I'll go through this in detail later. So not attitude, but aptitude. You must have algorithmic thinking. How many of you love maths, math, mathematics? Oh my god, all of you better love mathematics. I hope, please learn to love. 
Um, how many of you have the ability to Google? <laughs> oh, I'm glad. Thank God. Because we have seen coders who can't Google. Don't be shocked, all right? So um, what programming aptitude means is, all right, there is no way any coder, no matter how good in this world, can be experienced in every stack out there. It's just impossible. I like to give this example. If tomorrow Apple comes out with a new language called SWOOF, does that mean you're going to be the obsolete coder and no one will hire you anymore? The answer is no, right? All these uh, platforms and companies are, all these new languages and platforms are coming up all the time. But there are always coders who can pick it up. So that's one of the things we call programming aptitude. A good coder, right, would be able to pick up the API documentation tutorials, read it up for about two weeks, and they can code in that language or platform. So this is what I mean by programming aptitude. Um, for those of you who are a bit new, think about this. If statement loops, switch cases, for loops, they're the same in all languages. You just need to know how to define it in the different language. Right? Like, if I'm speaking Japanese, English, Spanish, everyone wants to say, hi, how are you? It's just how you say it in different languages. So here is how, this is what I'm talking about. Yep. So any competent coder on average should be able to pick up the API documentation and code it within two to three weeks. I'm not saying you're going to be like the godly best coder in this new language, but you should be able to start coding according to proper standards as per the documentation within two to three weeks. Right? Um, what I'm talking about with algorithmic thinking is do you have the ability to solve problems? How many of you have heard of the FizzBuzz test? <gasps> Not many people, oh my god. Okay, go and Google F I Z Z space B U Z Z. It's actually a very simple algorithmic question. But if you actually Google online, you'll see the stats that 95 to 98% of the people fail it for some reason. So please go and try it. It's simple, but if you can solve it, you're already ahead of the curve of a lot of people. All right. Um, how many of you know, know these notations, big N notation, log N? OK. <laughs> Not so important for you to know when you're junior, but eventually, like, you know, when you're solving a problem, you want your code to run faster and more efficiently and consume less memory. So if you're new to this, don't worry, it's OK. Uh, go and read up. You know, there's lots of online tutorials on how to make your code more efficient. Usually, this is the main differentiator between a really junior person, a mid-tier, and a senior guy. You know, nobody wants to run a code that will cause your, if I run a search and it takes five minutes for my search results to come out, that's an inefficient algorithm. But if it takes one minute, yay, it's more efficient. You know? So this is an example. So if you can you know, read up a bit more, once you're more confident in coding, read up tutorials on how to make your code more efficient, that will help you get to the next level of coding. Beyond just junior, you get to meet here, senior. Do you think of age cases? All right, who knows what, is, what are age cases? Oh, wow, okay. All right, I'll give you a very simple example of an age case. Say a client or your company says, hey, we have a website. I want you to add Facebook Connect to it. How many of you have tried that? Adding Facebook Connect to a website. Oh, wow, okay. So there are two, a junior person will just take the Facebook Connect API tutorial Follow as it is and plug it in. When user click login with Facebook Connect, okay, they straight away get an account. What is an age case? Think about this. What if when every time you log in with Facebook Connect, the website is getting your email address? Everyone following so far? All right. But what if this user trying to sign up with Facebook Connect already registered a non-Facebook account with the same email address? What do you think should happen in that case? So a junior developer wouldn't have thought of that case. They would just, okay, let's just implement Facebook Connect. Everyone can sign up with Facebook Connect. We grab the email and done, create the account. A more mid-tier or senior person will think, hmm, a user account already exists with this same email address. You know, so maybe we should have some mechanism to merge the Facebook Connect account with the other non-Facebook account that uses the same email address. Was I just too technical? Like, who's lost? Can you please put up your hand? Oh, nobody, all right, good. I just assume everyone understands me. Um, so yeah, the third trait is actually um, ability to Google. Surprisingly, Googling is a skill. I don't know why. There were many cases 
I spoke to some junior developers who were stuck, and within three minutes of giving them some search terms of what to search for on Google, they immediately unstuck themselves. Um, so Googling is not only about the search terms, but how good are you at reading Stack Overflow? But when I mean read Stack Overflow, don't just look at the solution, copy and paste, but actually read the solution and see what the code is actually doing. So a good coder is not just going to copy and paste, but we have this instead. We'll copy the code, we'll adapt it to our language or our project, and then modify it from there. So this is what I mean by ability to Google. Junior developers, I know you have a lot of tendency to just copy and paste and pray everything works, but maybe try to go deeper. What exactly is this sample code doing line by line? Try to understand. Copy it, yes. Adapt it and modify. There's nothing wrong with copying, but you know, learn to adapt and modify it correctly to fit your project. That will help you get to the next level. Yep. Um, yeah, if you can be resourceful, that would be great. Um, what I mean by this is there are lots of open source engines and shortcuts out there. Uh, how many people here can code but cannot design? Like, I put a gun to your head so you can't design to save your life. Okay, I see a few, okay. Um, nowadays, there are actually a lot of shortcuts out there. So, um, a lot of junior developers, they tend to build everything from scratch. Nothing wrong with building from scratch. Uh, but senior developers, sometimes we do build from scratch, but sometimes we find shortcuts because it's just much faster and more efficient for everybody, including whoever you are looking for. Uh, so there's lots of open source engines out there that you can buy to build an Airbnb clone for just $89. So I don't even build Airbnb clones from scratch anymore. I just buy the engine for $89 and modify the final 20%. I'll pull out links to show you examples of these. Um, if you need to design an admin dashboard, but you can't design and it still needs to look pleasant, I usually go to rapbootstrap.com, buy a mobile responsive theme that comes with HTML and CSS for just $20, and then hook it up. Because I want to focus more on coding the back end. I don't want to waste all my time trying to make a front end look good when I can't design. Right? So I'm going to show you examples of this so you know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, and there's a lot of libraries out there like Twilio, Talkbox, all that you could use depending on your needs. So, yeah, Firebase, which I believe you guys learned. Okay, so let me open the web browser. So this is what I'm talking about. Um, it's actually Twitter bootstrap templates, but done out really nicely. If you look, I got all of these admin themes that are so beautiful. It has no back end, it's the pure front end for $22, $25. I'll just go to a live preview quickly. Yeah, as you can see, everything looks so nice, you know, so pretty. There's even pop ups on the top right. You know, you can even um, like go and see what the graphs. You don't even have to code the graphs. They give you all the JS charts ready, so you can just pump in your data and all, and it will look beautiful. You see, you're being efficient. It's not that you're giving up or anything, right? If you're not good at design, please use these shortcuts and focus more on what you're good at, which is the back end. But at the same time, you have something presentable to show to your boss. See? And it's mobile responsive out of the box, which means you save many hours in trying to make your front end look good on all sorts of devices, right? So th this is what I'm saying about all these shortcuts. It again doesn't mean you're not a good coder. We senior coders use this all the time. Okay, I'm just gonna tell you. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of, So for example, look here. We can have a, I don't know, property guru clone, Airbnb clone, a job engine clone, like everything is here. Again, you see $89 comes with front end, back end, payment system all integrated. So if you know of these shortcuts that could save your life, make things look great, and you just modify the final 20% to get what you want, Again, it doesn't mean you're not being a good coder. It just means you're being smart and efficient. So sometimes, I know there's a tendency to do everything from scratch, but if you can be resourceful, it will take you very far. Everyone will be happy as well. All right, so let me get back to my slides. All right, so um, how many of you have problems gaining experience? Oh, nobody. Wow, you, you are great at gaining experience. <laughs> um, okay, who doesn't have a portfolio that you think you, know, you can just 
What is this? <laughs> I'm sorry, you're not sitting there, so. Okay, yeah, so think about it, right? If you learned a new language and framework, and you have zero portfolio and zero prior working experience in it, do you think any client would hire you or a company would hire you and pay you a good salary to do it? Most likely no, unless you get a boss who appreciates you learning on the spot. Uh, so to build the portfolio, one thing I like to do is uh, volunteer for reputable tech nonprofits. That's what I did in the early days as well to, you know, uh, get my portfolio up. Um, what I mean by reputable tech nonprofits is try to look around. Like in the U.S., um, the tech nonprofit sector is very established. Um, you can easily find a lot of nonprofits dealing with machine learning, AI, uh, building web dashboards, mobile apps, all these kind of things. So you could go and volunteer for it. The reason why, if you can find a reputable one, like one funded by Google Ventures or Y Combinator, would be good because then they'll definitely launch whatever you build for them. And if they launch it, it's a great item to put on your portfolio. Um, so for that, our company, actually, um, there was once all our developers, even though they passed all our code tests, everything, like they've been doing Ruby on Rails a really long time, and they're really good at it. They told me like, hey, Suyan, I realized no clients want to hire me for um, iPhone coding, even though they're really competent coders, just because they lack a portfolio. But at the same time, we know these tech nonprofits always need help, right? Technical help, was, they're all on a budget. So we decided to launch our Momo Gives Back program where our designers developers volunteer their time in a stack they always wanted to build a portfolio in. These tech nonprofits come, look, and then they work together. And in the end, it's a win-win for everyone. So we've been running this program for about four years now. I, I forgot how many thousands of hours has gone in, but a lot of the freelancers ended up getting a lot of really good paid jobs in all the tech stacks they always wanted to be hired in. So this is something you all can explore as well. You know, for yourself, go find a tech nonprofit that ha is doing a project that you really feel passionate about and has the experience you want and go for it. Right. Um, sometimes you may be a really good coder, um, but the client still is worried because maybe you're not familiar with Ruby on Rails, but you were really familiar with Laravel, for example. Offer the client free pickup time, like, hey, I'll go and learn Ruby on Rails two to three weeks, and I'll show you that I can do some tasks, and I'll do this for free just to show you I can pick it up, right? Surprisingly, when we tried this on the platform, a lot of clients were willing to take a chance with the talent because good clients will recognize that coders with good programming aptitude can pick up any language if given the time. It's just that sometimes clients don't want to pay for the time, but you want the experience, right? So try offering this if you really want to build your portfolio in a certain tech stack. And yeah, that's about it. Um, Q&A, which later is it Q&A? Or? Any Anyone has questions for Suyin? Uh -huh. Yeah. Can you show us some examples of uh, like a few real contracts that uh, went through your platform? Like what? What contract? Like, I don't know, from companies that want to All right. Do you know experts? <laughs> Everyone knows experts, right? They are a client for more than three years. <laughs> yeah, they hire actively on our platform for more than three years. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was just more like uh, for one, for specifically. Can okay, you tell us to do one example? Well, there are a thousand plus companies, so we have lots of kinds of jobs coming in and out. Um, there can be things like, hey, build an entire web backend with JSON APIs, right? RESTful JSON APIs from scratch. It could also be things, simple things like build a corporate website, e-commerce site on WordPress. It could also be really complicated stuff like, hey, I have a transportation mobile app. I would like to find the most efficient and profitable algorithm for my drivers to take. So it's like the whole range, yeah. So to give you an example, um, some of the talents on our platform, they built the Bank of America mobile app in USA. Some of them uh, have a PhD in machine learning from MIT. So the quality can be like junior all the way to senior. And again, that is why I dare to say that clients don't actually look at your qualifications most of the time. They're looking at what you can do and what skills you have. So just because you have no degree in computer science doesn't mean you cannot be a godly coder. We've seen some people um, graduate from London School of Economics with a degree in economics, self-learned coding on his own, and he became a super coder on our platform. We were so shocked. 
we were not expecting him to perform so well in our interviews and code tests, but he just did really well, and all the clients loved him, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. Level, uh, coders, coding level, uh, what do we expect? Can we expect like maybe very junior level, uh, maybe up to a very senior level, or which range of coders do we have? Basically all, you know, like, but okay, the lowest coder we accept on our platform has to be able to code a web app complete with JSON APIs and support maybe 250,000 users. Yeah. So, because anything more junior, they tend to be followers and not so independent. And because our platform is all uh, remote, remote, right? Remote coders, remote freelancers. To do remote, you have to be pretty independent because the client won't be there to, you know, point at you, or there will be no senior coder like staring at you all the time. So our guys have to be pretty independent. So if you want to live the fully remote work and travel life, you have to have a certain level of independence and proactiveness for the clients to trust you that. I don't see you, I don't meet you, but I know it's just going to be great. You're going to take care of my project really well, yeah. So when, when you uh, make different profiles and you say that, okay, this coder knows so many languages, maybe he knows two or three languages only, so we are making him to set a task that allows him to, to apply only the language he knows, or how many range of tasks well, everything on our platform is by time. So if a client says, like, I'm looking for someone with lots of experience in Node JavaScript, so we'll see if there's someone with a lot of experience in that. Even if there isn't, but we know there's a candidate who's a really competent coder and always wanted to learn Node, and he's willing to reduce his rates so that he can get the experience, we'll tell the client, hey, there's this really competent coder. He did really well in our interviews, code tests, and his algorithms are really strong. He's, he wants an experience in Node, and he's willing to charge you lower for maybe the first two months. Um, do you want to talk to him? A lot of times, clients actually say yes. Because, like I mentioned, good clients know that good coders, even if they don't know the stack, give them two to three weeks, they'll be pretty competent in it. Yeah. Yes? Do you leverage internships on some of the We don't arrange internships. It's all like actual jobs. Yeah, because well, we have to guarantee quality on our platform. Not saying interns are bad, some interns are great. Yeah, but we, we don't do internships. Um, in fact, there are some NUS students who's actually so-called interning on our platform. They, they are do, working as freelancers, but they're earning like full professional rates. Because they were so good, there was no need for them to like be stuck to an intern salary at all. Yeah, so we have like some NUS students, they work as full developers on our platform and they're getting like Silicon Valley rates even though they're like here and still a student in NUS because they were just that good. That's why I was saying we, we don't, again, we don't look at your degrees, qualifications and all, it's really your actual skill. If you're good, even you're young, go ahead, you can, you can skyrocket. There's no reason to hold you back, yeah. Okay, no more. All right, uh, you guys know where to find me. If any of you want to talk to me privately, female coder or get advice on life encoding, feel free to WhatsApp me. My number is right there. Uh, if I don't respond immediately, I promise to respond within a few hours because it probably means I'm stuck in a meeting. Uh, you can Facebook messenger me or I don't know, find me on Instagram or just email me. Yeah, I'm happy to share anything I can to help you with your career. Yeah, all right. Thank you.